Wrinkled, ruddy, bulbous, sagging, is it age, a life well lived or perhaps simply dodgy genetics? You can't help the face you live in, but it can help you. It'll reveal your true personality, point to the future. Well, according to the, the ancient Chinese art of face reading, if it's a good husband you're after, size really does matter. And to explain, we welcome back to 9am world-renowned feng shui master and face reader Joey Yap. Good morning, morning Joey. Good morning. This, this, is, a, this is an ancient, ancient Chinese, Chinese ritual. Art. Yes. Uh, perfected by mothers-in-law. Mothers-in-law, <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah. Is it at not? one point of yeah. time, yes. <laughs> it's used to actually look at your future daughter-in-law, just in case. And so you what, they, they would study the face of daughter-in-law, son-in-law? They would study the face of, of, the, of the person in the old days to check whether this lady... Now, in the old days, you would see whether the lady would bring good fortune to the husband and whether she can bear children or not. And what would what features would what she would look they? at? Yeah. Now, we look at the lady now. For, per, for a lady, we see the nose. Okay, the nose represents her husband. The quality of the nose. The larger the nose, the fleshier the nose, it represents that her husband is rich and wealthy and will give her all his money. Okay, so it's very important. The smaller the nose... Oh, hang on, hang on. Big nose on the bloke <laughs> or the big nose on the girl? On the lady. Oh. Okay, the lady has good quality of nose, she will marry a good husband. Oh. Okay, so if the nose is small and weak, you know, it looks frail on, on the face, the most likely her husband will be a person that is not so wealthy and probably will depend on her for a living. OK, now this is an example of a fleshy nose. Fleshy nose, that's right. OK. OK, so that rep represents that she will marry someone or eventually that someone that she will marry will become wealthy. OK, but what if, what if, for instance, this particular woman doesn't like her fleshy nose and she has it thinned out a little? No. Have what a little happens bit of in, rhinoplasty? <laughs> that's a good question. What happens in face reading is the face reflects your personality and your character. OK? This, if once you change your face, you obviously change your, your, your behaviour, your attitude and will subsequently attract that sort of destiny. Really? So, yeah, that's why face reading is not about changing your face to change your destiny. It's all about you. Who you are is reflected on your face. If you're a compassionate person, you have a compassionate face. If you're evil and cunning, you have an evil and cunning face. But you can't help it, can you? Because exactly. you, you are born with it. I mean, no, it's, you, it's, you it's, have a character, you change a, a, along the way. Like 10 years ago, you look at yourself. You know, 10 years later, you look at yourself in the photos, you change. And it does, it makes sense because you hear so often, you know, you see, you, you see an, an older person who's got a really angry looking face and yeah. they say you end up getting the face you deserve. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, your face is a reflection of your character and as a result of that character, it leads to a certain outcome and we call that destiny. For example, we can talk about uh, quality of marriages. Quality of marriages, we have to look at the marriage palace. And everyone has a marriage palace. It's here in between. A this marriage. Marriage, a marriage, marriage palace, palace in the palace. temple. All right. And, and what this, are we looking at? Now, when you're headache, where do you press? You have a headache, you press here, right? Yeah, uh, yes, marriage, yes. headache, you know, this is the part. Yeah. All right, so this is your marriage palace. So we need to see two finger space. Okay, if you have two finger space between the marriage palace and it's fleshy, you touch, if it's fleshy, yes. you are extremely satisfied with your marriage. <laughs> if I it is I've got sunken, two. Have I got two? Uh, yeah. if it is sunken, yeah. that means uh, at home you're feeling cold, you don't get the understanding that you, 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 you want. If it is overly fleshy, yeah, okay, that means you have a very uh, argumentative spouse and you cannot stand her or stand him. Okay, <laughs> so it's very interesting. Yeah, you look, this is a marriage palace. And if you have a mole in a marriage palace, it could also indicate third party infidelity. A, a mole in your marriage palace? Yes. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, like the title for a book. Right. Right. Good, I was yes. just um, a watching a, a segment earlier on, on, on your show, later on, you, uh, earlier on, you were talking about people who are. Uh, can commit adultery and infidelity. Now, yes. face reading can offer you something to have a look as well. Now, you notice that sometimes the eyes, the eyes represents relationship, all right? The eyes itself represent the quality of relationship. If the eyes look gloomy and down, usually at that point in time, the person is going through bad relationships, all right? If a person is happy, extremely happy relationship, yeah. you look at the eyes, it'll be beaming. And they sparkle, don't and they? And they sparkle. Yeah. Now, at the corner of the eyes, you will normally have what we call, um, in, in English, they call it crow's feet. Yes. But Chinese, the, the um, face wind, we call that uh, fish tails. Fish These tails. fish tails, you know, yeah, sometimes yeah, they go yeah. really long. Now, I'd have to go so close. No, you don't want to get that. <laughs> <laughs> the, fish tails. Now, if these fish tails are long, normally they are more, we use the flirtatious, but you flamboyant, they like to flirt oh. with the opposite sex, okay? Now, if it crosses into the marriage palace, what they are doing, is therefore interfering with their marriage. Oh, okay, so what does mine say? You don't say? want to cross, no, that's oh, not possible. No, right. Right. no, you don't want to ask. <laughs> all right, <no>. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at David's go all the way into his hairline. <laughs> right, look, so... look, turn around, turn around, just now, squeeze your... Squeeze mm, your... Oh, look. You see, so this is the thing that, that means you, are, you communicate a lot and you have a lot of the friends of the opposite sex. So that, that part creates a sort of um, 
a relationship thing that, all right, there's a little bit of suspicion going on at the parties and all that. Oh, okay, so, so you can so see on the face. So eyes okay. that are too crinkly. Yeah, you don't want those lines right. too long and too deep. Okay. All right, if it's okay, not too long, it's fine. What about the ears? The, the ears, ears are a problem, The ears represents the quality of health. Okay, that's why we like the ears to be slightly lighter than the rest of your face. And usually oh, it is. Yeah. The moment it turns darker than the rest of your face, your immune system is down. Okay, so that's how we look at the, the, the quality of the ears. The, cut, the, the complexion of the ears usually is lighter than the rest of the face. So the, the, pe the people that come to see you and mm. ask you to analyse their face, well, it's sort of too late, isn't it? I mean, if they're already in, in the marriage... No, you see, the I face changes. Okay, your, your, it doesn't change overnight though, but it has sort of, uh, your character will change and your face will subsequently change. There are two parts of it, the flesh and the bones. You can't change the bones. Bones is your structure, your inborn character. That's right. But the flesh can change. Mm. It can become fleshier, it can become bonier. Mm. You know, like the cheekbones, for example, represents your, your power and authority, your need to control. The larger your cheekbones, the more this person wants to be in control. Right, okay. so your face is changing as a result of it what you're experiencing. That's right, it will change. Okay, sure. how, do you, how do you use this? I know you use this uh, for in business, uh, for corporations and so on. Yeah. How does it work? What are they looking for? For example, they want to hire somebody, they want to know their personality, whether they suit the, the type of job that they're doing. For example, the higher the forehead, the more analytical they are. So if they're involved in a, a, a job or a position that involves analysis and you get a low forehead person, normally they don't, they don't like to analyze too much. They just take the easiest way you know, out or they don't want to think too much. The hands-on person. Okay. So, so I'm thinking that someone who is going for a job interview where they know that the, it helps the, how is the, the powers that be will be looking at their forehead, I mean, I imagine they mm. could probably wax it or something to make it harder. No, because you can't change the height of your forehead, right? Or not. Well, you can't really yeah. without looking very odd. Yeah, <laughs> so you can't like just shave off your, your hair and change your hair, hairline, right? So there's certain things you can't change, like the fleshy part of your, your cheeks, the, 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 your, the nose size, the eyes, the quality of your eyes. Yeah. Okay. We haven't spoken about sort of mouth and, and, and chin because I know they're significant uh, Yes, too. they are. Now, the mouth represents your ability to communicate. Now, for example, you're in this field. Usually, if you look at your mouth, you have this border. The lips, you have a border. So your ability to talk and communicate is good. Oh. Whereas people who don't have that Looking border, you see the, the sharp corner on your, on your lips below the philtrum? Mm -hmm. People who don't have that can't talk so well. Oh, really? Yeah, they, the more they talk, the worse it becomes. Okay, <laughs> so some people are not, not uh, um, geared towards doing sales or anything that, that involves speaking to others. So they're more to be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the quality of the mouth represents that. And the mouth also represents your old age. Now sometimes you look at someone and their mouth go like that, they can't close. Usually after 60, they're really lonely. No husband, no wife, no children, no money, that's worse. Yeah. So normally, so shut you, your mouth. Yeah, the mouth cannot close because the teeth protrude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you're protruding, I know people the mouth like can't, that. Can't close, right? And usually they're very lonely at the old age. Okay. Oh. So you can look at the, the because every part of the face in Chinese face reading represents certain age. Well, what about what about the chin? Then? The chin is the old age. That's why we like chin like this that are long because the older you get, the wealthier you become, the happier you become. Okay. okay? If you have a very sharp and thin chin, then the lo the older you get, the lonelier you become. Okay. Oh, wow. What, uh, let's talk about, uh, you, we touched on it mm. earlier, uh, uh, plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. For instance, Michael Jackson mm -hmm. has had, uh, well, we've got... Mm -hmm. Well, look yes. at that. Change it now. That's a well, massive change. That's now, a massive change, mm -hmm. right? You what see, does that indicate to you? A lot. You see, the nose represents, um, besides wealth. for wealth, okay, <gasps> uh, for a lady represents the husband, and nose represents quality of wealth. Now, the thinner the nose gets, the more it affects his financial destiny. And that has so happened, hasn't it? He's yeah. lost his money over the years. Mm. Wow. Fascinating. <laughs> All right, we've got a couple of others because I'm particular. We've had a special request from the girls in the office to have a look at George Clooney. <laughs> OK. You know, now, George is a good-looking man, but, mm -hmm. but his chin would seem to say that he'll get wealthier and... Happier in the happier. end, yes. All right, but you can see the eyes are sunken. And the eyes represents the quality of someone's relationships. Okay, oh. so and the eyes was also pointing downwards, it's droopy, a little bit droopier. So for him Poor to George. find a satisfactory relationship, therefore, will be a bit difficult. Oh, do we know which team he's batting for? Because, <laughs> you know, oh, look, I'm only repeating what's said in the gossip <laughs> magazines. Well, that's a little bit difficult because we can't choose the, uh, we can't tell a person's choices. Mm. Okay. okay, we can only see what are the likely characteristics that will lead to a certain destiny. You see, one thing that no, no, all types of astrology cannot do is that we cannot predict free will. I think it's fascinating because it's interesting some of the parallels you've drawn that are absolutely spot on. <laughs> Lovely to talk to you. Thank you Thank again, you. Josh. Thank you.